Hi, thanks. So uh, I'm Bart. Thanks also for having us here. Um, it's the first time we're here, so uh, uh, first experience in the community. And I must say, uh, we already had some very nice ideas, uh, very nice presentations yesterday. Unfortunately, we need to leave today early because uh, the pilots of SM Brussels Airline decided to strike today because they are being bought by uh, Lufthansa and they are going to be integrated in Eurowings, so they decided to cancel our flight. So we need to leave earlier with uh, Ryanair today, but nevertheless, um, uh, we already had a great experience yesterday, so thanks for that. Um, so I'm Bart, I'm coming from Netaxis, Belgium. Um, 2018 is a very important year for Belgium. We're going to win the World Cup this year. Um, <laughs> Dutch guys are not here uh, at Russia this year, so we have a big chance to win. Um, but that's not the topic of the talk today. We're going to talk about the session routing, routing engine. It's a product that we built on top of Camaleo. Um, it's built by NetAxis, but it's really powered by Camaleo. We couldn't do it without Camaleo. So first of all, small word about, uh, about our company. So for those guys who uh, want to turn on their ad blocker, please refer to the um, to the procedure explained yesterday by the guys from Subcom. Uh, so we can turn on them now for the next five minutes. First of all, you see here uh, those four handsome guys. These are the co-founders, the founders of uh, our uh, company. If there are some ladies in the room here uh, interested in uh, scoring a, a founder, well, uh, come over to me. I'll give you them the contact details. They might be interested in uh, uh, some nice looking ladies with deep Camaleo experience. So come over, I will give you the, uh, the contact details. Um, these guys were working at Italtel in 2010. Uh, and as you know, uh, for those who follow a bit the business, uh, the company was not doing that well. And so they decided to uh, close down the Belgian branch. And then on the ashes of uh, Italtel, the new company, NetAxis, was founded. Um, today, we don't have any link anymore with uh, Italtel. Uh, we're doing our own business. Um, but we're doing quite well, and we are building a, a competence center in telecommunications over IP. So the experience we had uh, uh, from the past, we've taken into the Node company. And we started out as a system integrator, um, doing integrations with you know, the traditional ones like Oracle SBCs, uh, Broadsoft, et cetera. Uh, we have expertise in unified communication. We can do audits, validations, consultancy, et cetera. But uh, when we're doing these integra integration works that um, at the operators, we got uh, questions from operators to uh, you know, introduce new things into the network, adapt the standard behavior uh, of their network. So we started developing uh, software tailor-made for, uh, for these companies. And then yeah, we saw that what one guy was asking, you know, we could reproduce somewhere else. And so we started developing our own uh, products. Um, we tried to do something else than the other guys are doing. Uh, so today, we don't only have system integration and support, we also have our own uh, product development. And like uh, Daniel said before, we, uh, we started out in the Benelux, but uh, we uh, recently opened uh, an office in the UK. Uh, we have some in France, and we have a development team, but also sales uh, guys in Italy. So we're uh, extending uh, to the rest of Europe. Uh, just like we will do with uh, the Red Devils this year. Uh, we will conquer the world, of course. Our customers, you see, uh, mainly Benelux, but we also have some uh, customers already in France, uh, in, uh, um, in Luxembourg, and in, uh, in even in Singapore. And uh, we also have already some customers in the UK. Um, so it's, it's expanding. Our software portfolio is mentioned on, on this slide. So these are all the products we have in, uh, uh, in our portfolio. What we'll talk about today is about this one, because this one is built on Camaleo. Uh, but if you look to the, the, the other uh, uh, product items or the products, I will briefly introduce them. So we have Ango. It's a fraud management software. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, carriers are, of course, uh, confronted with a lot of fraud on their network. And we have a module which is able to uh, integrate with their network and monitor in near real time um, uh, ongoing fraud, alert them, uh, et cetera, and even block calls in the network. Nemo is our networking monitoring software. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can collect CDRs from the network, but also capture uh, traffic, uh, so Wireshark traces stuff. Huh? Uh, so real packet traces. And it comes all together with a nice dashboard uh, ability to do end-to-end -end tracing, define anom anomalies, et cetera. So it's like passive probing. Uh, 
and reporting. And then we have uh, Dory. It's being renamed recently to Sigma because, uh, yeah, there was, you know, like we have, we initially started with Nemo. And then we, um, uh, we added this one. And then, yeah, Nemo and Dory, you know, it's called like the Disney guys. So uh, <laughs> we decided now to uh, rename it to, uh, to Sigma, but still on the slides, it's Dory. It's a call simulator. So you can say SIPP, but done on steroids. It's with a, with a graphical user interface, with reporting, et cetera. And it gives you a lot more flexibility than, uh, uh, than the traditional SIPP stuff. So uh, if you're interested in a good call simulator, you can do load testing, uh, test campaigns, et cetera. Come over, we will, uh, we will be glad to, to show you. And then uh, on the south side here of the picture, we have uh, some other stuff, also like an API orchestrator. You know, a lot of operators, they uh, uh, have a lot of difficulties with integrating all this beautiful network uh, stuff into their OSS systems. And we built, uh, you know, like a user developer friendly interface between the network and uh, the OSS of uh, the customers, and also with the ability to build custom portals and applications, etc. So we, they really try to uh, increase the flexibility of uh, the network operators. And then let's quickly move on to uh, what we're here to talk about uh, is the service routing engine. So you, now you can uh, disable again your ad filter uh, because we will talk now about Camaleo, etc. So first of all, DID, what is it about? Uh, it's a session routing engine, and I guess most of you are using Camaleo. Uh, to doing similar things. You know, you get an invite in from some location and you want to route it to another destination. And then you start, can start, of course, with doing all kinds of nice things in the config files of Camaleo. But what we did, we extended it and we built our own uh, routing lodging engine on top of it, which allows the customer to define their own uh, uh, routing logic using uh, building blocks, flow charts, et cetera. I will, uh, I will have some uh, screenshots showing how it works. And it allows you as well to uh, you know, go to external sources like an external database, to uh, external web services. Um, you can do whatever you want. It's really something which enables the customer to, without any Camaleo knowledge, really build very complex routing scenarios. Uh, but uh, yeah, do it in all themselves. And it comes with a HTML5 GUI, which is really uh, user-friendly. So if we go a bit deeper into the details, we really use Camaleo as, as a SIP stack. Um, but then we leverage the app Python. We are uh, yeah, Python adapts. So everything we wrote, we've written here is in, in Python. And we leverage the app Python module. We send a call descriptor, so like, you know, you know the call ID, to, from, etc. We sell them, send them uh, over to our software. We process it according to the logic that the customer has defined. And then uh, we send back a lot of instructions and we use uh, modules like the UAC, TM module, et cetera. And we <laughs> apply them all on, uh, on, Cap on Camaleo. And then uh, we provide also a return code which, which will then apply the correct routing logic into in the in config file. And based on that, you know, we will relay the message, send uh, an error back, uh, uh, redirect the call, uh, all things which are possible. So why, why did we build this? Like I said earlier, all our products started with uh, a real customer question. You know, somebody has an ID or wants to have something and they don't find a solution in a commercial product or uh, it's either expensive or it's not flexible enough to cover all the needs. And this was the case with one of the, the Belgium operators and they, they wanted to have a central routing database to connect to their Safari soft switches. Um, and yeah, they didn't really find on the market uh, something that fitted their budget and fitted also their needs. So that's why we started scanning uh, the open source community, see what was available, what could we use, and then we came to Camaleo. Uh, we've seen there a very active community. Uh, we also noticed that the features which were already present are you know, great, and it allows us also to really extend uh, with our own uh, intellectual property. So that's why we've chosen Camaleo over all the other things. And we, um, well, we started to make something tailor-made for the customer. But uh, then we saw other customers, and they had similar questions. It was also not only operators, but also enterprises. And we said, OK, maybe we can you know, go further on this ID and try to uh, extend it. And so we productized it, and we came to the product that is today. Um, in a nutshell, 
the main features. I will go through them uh, one by one. So first of all, um, many operators, of course, ask, get your great setups with redundant element managers and call processors, you know, the traditional stuff. So, uh, you know, they ask, we, we do. Uh, this is uh, how a setup typically looks like. Uh, we have um, element managers in an active hot standby setup. We have call processors um, spread possibly over multiple data centers. And um, from the element manager, which I'll show in a minute, uh, you're able to uh, actually uh, configure everything. You're able to define your service logics. It's basically the one which is running the, the GUI. And uh, all this thing is being replicated to these uh, call processing nodes. And these call processing nodes are, of course, uh, interfacing with, uh, with Camalio and uh, are getting the calls in. We implement an M plus N redundancy scheme. So it means if one goes down, uh, so if one goes down, uh, the other one will automatically take over. We use Pacemaker for uh, enabling the redundancy. And the element manager is not only, uh, you know, as acting the configuration uh, portal for all these nice stuff. Uh, they are also doing log collection, statistic collection, etc. Uh, so we send all this information back to the GUI, and uh, the customers able to see in real time how many invites are there, uh, which kind of logics are being triggered, uh, what is the time that it took, uh, what is the health status of all these uh, different nodes. Um, and the, the nice thing there is, of course, it's also redundant, carrier grade, you know, and it means that if one goes down, we can easily take over by the other one. And if all is gone, the system is, of course, still running. So that is what we call carrier grade these days. Secondly, HTML5 GUI, already, uh, already mentioned that. Uh, this is how it looks like. And I told you that we have uh, a nice interface with all these kinds of building blocks. So a customer can define uh, his own service logics. He can uh, add all these building blocks, connect them to each other. You know, you start here, you do maybe a digit analysis, you do a digit manipulation, you do a query of the internal database. Uh, and based on that, you have different possible scenarios to exit the logic. So it means that the customer, he doesn't really need to know Camario. It's using Camario extensively, but um, he, he no longer needs to you know, dig into the config files. He can do everything right from this GUI. And we're constantly adding also new nodes there, uh, on request of, of customers. These are the things that are already available today in, in, in our code. Uh, so we have, we can analyze the codec list, we can uh, do digit analysis, um, you can create conditions, you know, like AND and OR conditions, uh, etc. We can do queries on uh, web services using JSON, XML. We can do, uh, there is an internal database, I will come to that in the next slides. Uh, you can query the internal database, so you can go also to the external databases. For example, something that customers in enterprise environments are asking, can you integrate also with an AD? Uh, because, you know, uh, every company, large company has an Active Directory, so we will be able to soon also integrate with an Active Directory. And, of course, all our products are somewhere, somehow linked together, so we can also query, for example, our network monitoring software to check the quality of service on the network, you know, uh, if a trunk is... Uh, perceiving bad voice quality, you know, we select another one. We can manipulate, of course, headers. We can add, remove headers, update to, from, digit manipulation, SIP URI, replace the body. You know, whatever you are used to in uh, SIP manipulation, it's possible. And you don't know, you need to know anything about Camario there again. The data model, uh, so it comes, the software comes as well with, uh, with their own database and um, the data model is fully flexible. What you see a lot in, in the commercial stuff is, uh, you know, the data model and the way how it flows is all uh, predefined. We built the data model um, uh, on request of the customer. So uh, you see here for this customer, you have different tables like an operator table, number ranges, routing info, and this is something we define on the fly, so we, we do an intake session with the customer and you know, we see what, he, what his needs are and we build this data model really uh, on his own needs. Uh, the, the, the items you put here, like in the columns, it's you know, like you want, like you wish, that's the way how we do it. And you have in the GUI immediately uh, also um, 
uh, possibilities to search it, update it, etc. But also uh, via uh, a REST API. So everything you define or redefine in our uh, in our scheme is immediately available as well on uh, uh, on an API. So you could integrate with your uh, with your own IT systems or maybe exposed to uh, uh, so to some external guys, for example, to allow customers to update through an API the routing. Uh, maybe enable uh, fixed to mobile convergence, uh, changing somewhere a flag between mobile or, or I'm seeing private or business. These are all things which are quite easy because it's it's so open. And another nice feature of this flexible data model is that we also allow uh, customers to um, yeah, define uh, have several versions of the data. So. Um, you, you see here the GUI where you'll be able to select for every uh, yeah, data base or data model, select the version which is uh, active. So we have always an A version and a B version. So the customer can work, for example, on the B version, update everything, you know, change the routing settings, etc., And then you know, test something in the GUI uh, because you can select, for instance, for the GUI. I will show you the simulation in a minute. Uh, you select the active version, you say, okay, I was updating now version B, so you say, in the GUI, I'm going to work with version B for testing purposes. In production, I'm al also running still version A. I'm ready with updating, okay, I update uh, my data model, and the customer can easily switch right from the GUI to the, to the B model. So it's something which is very interesting for, uh, for operators, uh, able to change things without actually impacting uh, the production uh, environment. And like I said, we also built in a simulator for simulating the routing logic. So here again is the, uh, is the, is the, the flow chart. Uh, so suppose that you are adding a node or changing a node or I don't know what, and you want to see uh, how a call is, is going. Well, we have here the possibility to enter, for example, a calling number, but maybe uh, an entire SIP invite. You just enter it into the GUI and immediately uh, you know, we show the way how it goes throughout the logic. You change the number, you know, it takes another way. Uh, and there is even uh, a very nice uh, pane here, which you can open. And then you can see, uh, like here on number one, how are all the parameters being set. And you see how they uh, evolve throughout your logic. So it's possible for the operator uh, to, you know, change things, test them, test them on, you know, you have your test environment, you have something else which is running. You just clone, for example, the service logic, you do your adoptions, you test it, you test it maybe on your new data. You know, you can test everything upfront without even uh, interfacing your real production environment. And last but not least, I do not have screenshot about that, but we also have blocks in there uh, to adopt the CDR format because, you know, uh, Every operator wants to charge some way, somehow, the calls they have. And then it's uh, sometimes interesting that you can add additional fields. Traditionally, uh, CDRs of uh, the traditional vendors, you know, they are fixed and you need to integrate it and et cetera. We also have a fixed, uh, we have a base format, but you're able to extend it uh, very flexibly. And uh, you can do very nice things with that. And of course, the last thing, uh, like I already said, all our products try to integrate as much as possible with each other. Uh, so you see, we add APIs, we can, you know, everything can talk to each other. Now, uh, going more into the details, what are the technologies that we, we used? So first of all, Camario, but that was something you already knew. We use Python, that's the language we prefer, and then we use things like yeah, Cherry Pie, SQL Alchemy, etc. We use ZeroMQ as a, a messaging uh, library in, in order to communicate between the different processes that we built. We use Postgres as the database, you know, the replication stuff, it's Postgres. And then in the front end, we use React and we use also uh, D3GS. It's a, 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 J, a JavaScript library which is being used to make the fancy uh, block stuff. And apparently, according to our main developer, this was the most difficult part of the entire uh, solution. So uh, if we uh, dive, a bit, uh, dive a bit deeper into the solution, we have uh, several processes. On the next slide, you will see the architecture. So on the, on the Yelm manager, we basically run the GUI, the REST API, et cetera, and also a process which collects all the logs and the health status of all the different uh, modules. 
And if you go then deeper into the element managers, well, there, of course, we have Camalio, because if without Camalio, no SIP. Uh, and then all these things are our own processes. So we have a message broker, which is implementing uh, uh, a zero MQ uh, uh, routing service. And uh, all the other elements, they connect to, uh, to this, this broker. So we have different call processes per virtual CPU. Uh, we have normally one call processor. Uh, and it's this one which is then applying the service logic. Uh, we have uh, an agent's monitor because, you know, like uh, traditionally all the SIP destinations, you try to scan them with options. This is what this thing does. And the help monitor, it's monitoring the health of the different, uh, different processes. And if we look more into detail uh, how, how the thing is being built up. So we have uh, Camalio. Uh, we uh, use the app Python to, um, to talk to the uh, interface module. We send the call description to there. And from there, uh, from this module, we actually uh, switch to 0MQ and we, we convert what we get from Camalio into a JSON format and we put it out onto the 0MQ uh, uh, message bus. And from there, it goes to the broker, which is then sending everything to the call processor, which is at that moment the least loaded. So we select always uh, the most healthy one. And this guy is then uh, looking in the database or in his memory, fetching the logic that is being defined by the customer, applying it, applying the entire logic, and then send back over 0MQ uh, all the instructions to uh, the Camalio uh, interface. And then we, of course, publish all logs and statistics, et cetera, towards uh, the central manager, which is then located on, uh, on the element manager to which the graphical user interface is connected. So this is a bit the architecture of the software that we built. Uh, but like I said before, the processes are a bit spread over the different uh, nodes. Now, for what do we use it? Uh, where do we, so we said we already sold it several times. So uh, I had two use cases. Uh, so the first one is a national wholesale uh, carrier in the UK, if you know something about wholesalers, et cetera, and you look at their poster, you might know which one. Um, so they uh, have several customers, um, and they provide these guys with um, you know, um, connectivity to different uh, carriers in the UK and abroad. Well, they had a, a Sonos set up with uh, PSX. I don't know if you know it. It's quite complex, but they had a lot of problems with it. Uh, and we, um, we, we came in and we showed them our uh, service routing engine and they immediately saw the, the value of the solution. We built a custom uh, database for them and we implemented the solution as a, as a, uh, you know, as a routing engine. We use it, I think, in a redirect mode. Um, and they, it's already in service. They, they are already taking traffic uh, with the solution. Uh, and they have quite some nice plans with the solution. They, they want to really leverage the API uh, thing I showed earlier. They really want to leverage to, to, to differentiate and provide additional services uh, to their customers. Other cases in enterprise scenarios, um, you know, many enterprises, large enterprises, are moving to Skype for Business or something similar. Uh, but they still have some traditional stuff like Avaya. Um, and some Genesis stuff, and you know, uh, usually large enterprises, banks, etc., they have quite uh, a large uh, landscape of UC and PBX, etc., solutions. Um, and usually they have uh, somewhere some static files routing, uh, defining the routing internally. And many of them are looking into something more flexible to, to you know, to ease migration, to uh, you know, get more grips on their network. And there we also have proposed and implemented uh, our uh, service routing engine, which is then acting like a central routing element between different carriers on the north side and their different uh, UC PBX uh, implementations on the south side. Um, well, and many of them are these days also looking, of course, into call recording. So what? Well, this was uh, the presentation. I don't know if I'm in time. I guess I am. Um, yeah, we, are, we have time for some uh, questions. Well, I have to say I'm somehow amazed about what you achieved with that, uh, building things from uh, the web interface. I think Andreas, which I know is still here, Andreas Grenig, no, is maybe outside. He was the one that tried to build the um, OpenSCR wizard. 
web wizard who remembers that? Oh, two, oh, so old guys. <laughs> so yeah, that was like 2006 when uh, there was an attempt to build like a web uh, wizard to generate the configuration file. And somehow this is uh, one of the issues that we have in adoption of um, uh, Kamailio, especially from the telecom guys, because they are not used with the scripting language with this kind of uh, uh, routing logic that we build. So this looks like something um, very uh, uh, interesting. Um, so anyone having questions, prepare, because my uh, question would be, okay, I have a question here. Uh, well, it's really two questions. Uh, you were saying that uh, you are using the CRMQ to, uh, mm -hmm. well, to contact other other companies in the in your architecture. Uh, did you develop a module, or are you using the the Python libraries for? Yeah, we're for that? using the Python libraries of okay. uh, zero. And uh, the other question is, uh, are you changing the data just in pure JSON, or are you using some way of packetization like a message packet or something like that? Can you repeat it, please? Yeah, when you send the messages uh, to the broker, yeah. it's playing JSON, or are you uh, packeting somehow with message packet or something like that? No. Maybe plain JSON. Yeah, plain JSON, yes. No issue with that? Yeah, I'm not uh, the one who developed the solution. Uh, <laughs> if you can, I can ask him, but um, uh, no, I don't think so. I, okay, well. But, you know, I can I can ask him. I didn't implement No, I mean, uh, when you use JSON, I have some experience with CMQ. Uh, when you use JSON and the packet and the message you want to change is uh, too big, uh, you may run into some issues if you don't uh, use some kind of Packetization, but, uh, but uh, I think uh, he is using something. Uh, but maybe we can discuss afterwards. Um, I think I've seen in the code that uh, there is something in there to you know like uh, serialize the stuff, etc. But uh, okay. maybe we can uh, discuss afterwards. Thank you. So quickly, if someone else is not having the um, uh, microphone yet, and maybe it's not you, the right person, but maybe Stefan or other colleague can answer. So you generate that routing logic from the web interface. Is the output something that still a human can read and troubleshoot, or what do you like mean? Um, because generating from the web interface sometimes auto-generated code and so on could be rather complex. Yeah, but how you found that is still manageable uh, by uh, people when someone is reporting, look, I tried this module and now somehow it doesn't work. Is it like the ratio between having this very nice user interface for generating it and then troubleshooting eventual issue on generated script is yeah, a, a good balance? We, we are in fact not generating, um, uh, we are not touching the configuration file of, uh, of Camario. So it's not that we are generating um, adoptions to the config file. Basically, uh, all the, the routing logic are no, nodes are present in our in our code, okay. and in our database we store uh, the way how we traverse all these nodes, and uh, we go from Camalio. Ah, okay. We send a call descriptor, like I said, to uh, to the Python. Okay. We traverse the logic in our code, and what we do is we send back all these uh, all these commands to uh, to Camalio to adopt maybe in the body or remove a header, etc. Okay. So okay. It's not really generating. Uh, okay. Code. Now it's uh, more clear because as I'm working uh, with uh, all these scripts, I'm thinking, well, if it's not built by me, then it's hard to actually understand sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, the time. Thank you. Very interesting person. <laughs>